All right, we are back to this awesome Pac-Man game. And in this video, we will program Pac-Man's revenge. And Pac-Man will set the ghost on the run after eating the power pills. So I'm going to get right down to it to program our power pills. So these power pills will be placed strategically throughout the maze and they will blink very, very quickly. And when Pac-Man touches them, we will send a message to all the ghosts to switch their modes to being on the run instead of following Pac-Man. So the way I'm going to place the power pills strategically throughout the maze is obviously by creating a bunch of clones. So I'm going to go to events and when the flag clicked, I'm going to go to a certain set of coordinates and create a clone of myself. So I'm going to go to motion and bring in the go to block. So the X and Y coordinates are going to be very specific. So I'm going to say X 192 and negative 64. And then I'm going to create a clone of myself. All right, then I'm going to duplicate these two. And then I'm going to duplicate these four. So I'm going to go to the following coordinates. The first is 192 and negative 64. The second is negative 192 and negative 64. So on the opposite side of the maze, on the left hand side. Then we have 192 and 112, which is right here on the upper right hand side. And then negative 192 and 112 so on the upper left hand side of the screen and after creating four clones the original sprite is simply gonna hide so I'm going to bring in hide and the script for the clones is going to say something like when I start as a clone I'm going to flash very very quickly so in a forever loop I'm going to simply show and hide very very quickly so I'm going to say show and then hide. And in between these two, I'm going to add a very, very simple and quick wait block. So wait for a small amount of time, like 0 0.05 seconds. All right, so 0 0.05 is 1 20th of a second. So very, very quickly. Now, if I hit the flag notice what's happening. We have our four clones here flashing on the stage. This is great. Now the script over here is not the entire logic for a clone because a clone needs to be touched by Pac-Man and then needs to broadcast a message once Pac-Man touches it. So I'm going to add another script starting with when I start as a clone, which you remember will be executed simultaneously around this other one that I've just created. So when I start as a clone, I'm going to wait until Pac-Man touches me or I touch Pac-Man. So I'm just going to say wait until touching Pac-Man. All right. And then I'm going to broadcast a message. So I'm going to broadcast a new message. I'm going to name this message ghosts run. And after that, I'm going to stop all the other scripts running in the sprite because the clone will still flash around like crazy. So I'm going to go to control and then stop other scripts in the sprite. And then I'm going to hide from the stage. And I'm going to play a little sound because this power pill has a small sound. Right, so I'm going to play this sound until done. So if I hit the flag and then move Pac-Man around and I touch one of this power pill, the sound was made and the power pill disappeared. But now we also need to program the ghosts to react to this ghost run message. So let me go to the ghost sprite and let me add a small variable to keep track on whether the ghost is running away or towards me. So I'm going to make a variable for this sprite only and I'm going to name it on the run. And this variable will have one of two values, yes or no. If on the run is yes, it's running away from me. If on the run is no, the ghost will run towards me and will try to catch me. And I'm also going to make another variable for this sprite only that I'm going to call dead. 
because once Pac-Man touches the ghost on the run, it will stay dead for the duration of the round. And uh, now let me prepare the values for these variables. So when the round starts, when setting target X and target Y first time, I'm also going to set dead to no and on the run also to no. So I'm going to set dead to no and set on the run also to no. So this will be the first thing that's happening when I receive new round. And uh, after that, I'm ready to receive the ghost run message. So let me create some space here. So when I receive the ghost run message, I'm going to do the following. If I'm not dead, so if the ghost is not already dead, then I'm going to set the on, on the run variable to yes. So if and I'm going to bring in an equals operator and if dead equals no, so if the ghost is still alive, I'm going to set on the run to yes. And after 10 seconds, I'm going to revert it back to no because the ghost will not stay on the run forever. So from the control section, I'm going to wait something like 10 seconds, and then I'm going to set on the run back to no. So set on the run back to no. Now on its own, this script doesn't really do much because the ghost will still continue to follow me given the fact that they always adjust their target X and target Y. Where is that script? We had a small script that always updates. Yeah, here, right over here. We have a forever loop in which the ghost always sets target X and target Y to the coordinates of Pac-Man, even if the on the run variable is set to yes or no. So if the on the run variable is set to yes, we need to set target X and target Y away from Pac-Man this time around, which deserves some extra explanations. All right, so consider the ghost right over here and Pac-Man right over here in the world. And I, the ghost, I'm trying to run away from Pac-Man. I'm at coordinates X and Y and Pac-Man is at his coordinates Pac-Man X and Pac-Man Y. We can compute the horizontal distance between the ghost and Pac-Man by storing it in some kind of variable that I'm going to name dx. And the value for dx is going to be the difference between Pac-Man X and my x coordinate. And the same for the vertical distance, and I'm going to store that in a variable that I'm going to name dy. Now, because I'm trying to run away from Pac-Man, I'm going to set my target x and my target y in the opposite direction from Pac-Man, so right about here. So I'm going to compute my target x and target y, assuming that this imaginary point is at the same horizontal and vertical distance from the ghost, but in the opposite direction to Pac-Man. So this point is at distance dx on the horizontal to the ghost and the distance dy on the vertical. Now, how to obtain target x and target y? Well, we will need to subtract the distances dx and dy from the coordinates of the ghost. So these will be our coordinates. Target x is the difference between my coordinate x and that horizontal distance. And the target y will be, again, the difference between my y coordinate and that vertical distance dy that I computed before. So I hope that little diagram made sense because we're going to translate that into actual scratch code. So let me bring these scripts a little bit down to create some extra space. And here in the forever loop where we decide to target X and target Y, I'm going to bring in a big if else block. So I'm going to set target X and target Y to the coordinates of Pac-Man only if on the run is equal to no. So I'm going to bring these here. And the condition is going to be on the run must equal no. So I'm going to bring in an equal sign. And here I'm going to bring in on the run and on the run must equal no. So if on the run is equal to no, the ghost will run towards Pac-Man. Otherwise, I'm going to create those two little variables that I talked about in that little diagram. So I'm going to make a variable for this sprite only that I'm going to name dx and another variable for this sprite only that I'm going to name dy. 
Now I'm going to hide these from uh, the stage and then I'm going to set them. So set dx and dy. And you remember from the diagram dx is the difference between the coordinate of Pac-Man and the ghost. So I'm going to bring in a difference operator two times. So dx is going to be Pac-Man x minus my x position. So I'm going to bring in Pac-Man x and my x position. So this is the distance between the ghost and Pac-Man. And dy is going to be Pac-Man y minus y position. So Pac-Man y and y position. Good, so we've computed our horizontal and vertical distances. Now we need to compute our target x and target y of that imaginary point that we're going towards. So I'm going to go to variables again and I'm going to set my target x and my target y. So target x and target y. And the target x is the subtraction between my x position and this horizontal distance. So I'm going to bring in two difference operators. Okay, and I'm going to bring in x position here and y position here. And I'm going to bring in the dx value here and the dy value in the second block. So what have we done? We have changed setting the target X and target Y to the coordinates of Pac-Man only under the condition that the ghosts are not running away. If the ghosts are running away, I'm going to set target X and target Y to that imaginary point away from Pac-Man. So let's hit the flag and see that this is the case. So the ghosts are coming after me. And let me hit one of these power pills. So notice that the ghost suddenly turned away from me and if I chase it, it will run away from me. All right, this is awesome. I'm still dying, but uh, I'm going to fix that in a second. Now, there are a number of things that we need to do. When a ghost runs away from me, we should change its costume to this white running costume, and if I touch it, it will switch the costume to this eyes, these transparent eyes that I named dead over here. So, in the big ginormous script, where the ghost switches the costume back to costume ID after the collision check, we should not switch the ghost's costume to costume ID, but rather to the correct costume that the ghost must be in if it's either dead or on the run. So I'm going to bring in some code that will decide which costume this ghost should take. So I'm going to bring in an if else block, and the condition is if the ghost is dead. So I'm going to go to operators and bring in the equal sign. And if dead is equal to yes, so if the ghost is dead, then I need to switch the ghost costume to dead. So I'm going to go to looks and switch costume to dead. Otherwise, the ghost is alive, but I also need to check if it's running away from me. So I'm going to bring another if else block and I'm going to snap it inside. And I'm going to duplicate this equals condition. And instead of dead, I'm going to check whether on the run is equal to yes. So if on the run is equal to yes, then the costume that I need to use is that running costume. So I'm going to go to looks and switch costume to running. Otherwise, the ghost is neither dead nor on the run. So it's running towards me and it should have its normal costume. So I'm going to switch its costume to costume ID. So I'm going to take this away and switch costume to costume ID. And I'm going to snap this big if condition after the big if else condition and this whole script in the right place. So notice here in the big if block for the ghost to be able to change its direction. So under the forever loop, under this if condition. So make sure you have your scripts here in the right order. Now let's test that. So I'm going to go to a power pill and I'm going to set the ghost to on the run. So the ghost is running to me and now the ghosts are running away from me, but they're still able to kill me because I'm not able to make them die when I touch them. Let me correct that. 
So we have here role condition if touching Pac-Man. This is the exact point where the ghost needs to die if it's on the run. So I'm going to change the broadcast Pac-Man die to only happen if the ghost is not dead and it's not on the run. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in a big if block. So if dead is equal to no, so I'm going to go to variables and I'm going to bring in dead. So if dead is equal to no, that is the ghost is alive, then I'm going to bring in an if else block inside. If on the run is also equal to no, so I'm going to bring in on the run. So if on the run is equal to no, then I'm going to broadcast Pac-Man die because I'm neither dead, so that means I'm alive, and I'm not on the run either. So I'm running towards Pac-Man and I'm trying to get him. Otherwise, I am not dead and I am on the run and I'm still touching Pac-Man, so Pac-Man got me. So I'm going to set dead to yes. All right, and I'm also going to start a little sound, which is not Pac-Man death, but Pac-Man get ghost, which will sound like this. Now, this whole script will happen in the if touching Pac-Man block, so I'm going to snap it inside. Let me bring this other script away so we can have some more breathing room for our scripts. We wrote a lot of code in this game. Alright, so let's hit the flag and see what's happening now. So spacebar. So the ghosts are going after me and if I get one of this power pill... Alright, I just killed a ghost and after 10 seconds the ghost should still run towards me at this time. Yeah, it's being I'm being chased and I'm probably going to die soon. All right. I died. Good. All right, so at this point we have our ghosts completely done and we have our most important pieces of the game already set up. So join me in the next video where we will start finishing up this game.